Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at a selection of motherboards. I've got three here from MSI, three here from Asus. I do have other boards that I've not managed to do yet. There's been a huge journey with uh, BIOSes and updates and management engine firmware updates uh, from Intel which have slowed proceedings. I will say that there is a dedicated CPU review already on the channel if you'd like to go and have a look at it or go and have a look at the website. These uh, boards all have standalone written reviews all on the website as well if you'd like to see the data and uh, pick apart some specific uh, features and stuff. We roll the um, boards into one video at the start because otherwise if I uploaded all six videos all at once they just don't get watched very much because of the algorithm. It just makes life a little bit difficult. So we do this so that we've got some early um, uh, reviews up for you guys to go and have a look at. Now there's a few things to talk about. If you end up buying one of these boards, processors, anything, if when you are installing Windows afresh, you end up getting on a boot loop and it doesn't look like you're getting anywhere, little bit of advice based on what's happened with me during testing. It may not happen now though. This is the thing that I do need to uh, stress. But we had an issue in that with uh, all of the boards. Uh, it did turn out to be a BIOS problem, but um, we had an issue with the graphics card fitted and installing Windows. So if you remove your graphics card and use the iGPU, install Windows, but critically install all of the Intel and motherboard drivers, then fit your graphics card, then install the graphics card drivers, you'll probably find that a very helpful workaround. We're hoping things will get fixed before it gets to you at home. You do also very critically need to remember to update the BIOS on the board the moment you get it. When you get it, check to see if there's an updated version. For the next few months, I'd still keep an eye on checking for updated versions. Updating the BIOS is not a scary thing. Download the file, put it on a USB stick, plug it into the back of the board, go into the BIOS itself by pressing delete, find the BIOS update area, and just keep on top of updating your board. It's not as scary as it, it used to be, and it should just go through absolutely fine. Um, keep an update on your BIOS is gonna be a big thing. Also, mainly for that is a lot of the Intel management engine updates will come in a BIOS update. So then you need to keep an eye on your drivers and stuff at the same sort of time. Just make that for a little while part of your um, standard upkeep of your system. Every week or two, just have a look because you'll be surprised you might see some big performance jumps. You'll probably hear um, from me or the news section on the OC3D website where Mark writes it you will probably see uh, updates coming from there if you would like more visible things. The other thing that you do have to do with Arrow Lake is go to settings, so Windows taskbar, settings, find where the power thing is, power options, and you'll see it's set to balanced out of the box. You need to set that to performance. The minimums on your games will change dramatically when you put it on performance mode. This is something that we're hoping is gonna be fixed uh, again with driver stroke Windows updates, but there are a lot of teething problems at the moment with Windows 11 24 H2. So although a load of the fa AMD fanboys are now gonna be shouting at the screen, oh, Intel have failed, Intel have done this, Intel have done that, 24H2 caused havoc with x870e as well if you remember and it was down to the chipset drivers so we're all suffering with those problems or everyone's suffering with those problems so just stand down calm down now we have a wide selection of boards we've got the uh, white gaming uh, z890a we've got the old favorite which is the uh, hero i've also tested the extreme which is Extreme in every possible way, including the price. We've got the Ace, the Tomahawk, and the Carbon. So a fairly good match. Now you're gonna now say, well, where's the Gigabyte boards? I asked, apparently they had four, and I don't have one. So that's it, done, <whistles> not gonna bother. Uh, we'll just leave it 
at that. Now, the um, power when it comes to these boards, there are settings within the BIOS on every single one of the boards where you can change it from the Intel standard power profile. You can increase the power profile if you want. You get a marginal upgrade in performance if you do that with the 285K. The 265 and the 245, I saw no performance update, uptake at all from extra power being able to be uh, used. So just kind of keep that at home. We tested with the normal Intel um, platform uh, power requirements. Uh, and as you'll see with the VRM temperatures, the Hero was a bit mad to the point where we run it a few times and whether the, it sits slightly further over the fan on the top, because we do have a H170i in the roof. And that case, in case you're wondering, is a Haven HS420. It is amazing. And that's the reason why I ended up using it in the, well, for the test rig for um, Arrow Lake. And it's because I actually really liked it. So I wanted to use it. Uh, it's a system that I'm going to be using for quite a while. So I was like, well, do you know what? I'm actually just going to roll it into a test rig. There's um, uh, an RTX 4090 in there because you want to max out frame rates wherever possible. And it's all being powered by a HX 1500i. It's just my power supply of choice when I want to make sure I've got loads of possible power and it's all clean and reliable. Uh, and that's just that. Um, so VRMs are great. CPU temperatures, they're all very, very, very close. And uh, it didn't seem to matter what I did with the fan profile. Yes, I could bring them down a little bit if I turned it on crazy mad, but I never really saw anything over 80. And that's something I'm going to dig into a little bit more because I am wondering whether this might be a very, very purposeful limit that Intel have set. And it'll be something that I'll come back to once I've actually had some time because the 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 amount of times that I think it's 20 times I've changed the motherboard in the case so far. I've tested the CPUs completely twice because we had a BIOS update. So we went back in and we retested all three of them again. And it takes me about eight hours to test the um, CPUs. And if you go and have a look at the website, you can see all the data, uh, all the boards with all the data and everything as well. There was so much that we had to do. It was crazy. The CPU temperatures all roughly the same. Uh, the one thing I will say is when you do mount the uh, your CPU cooler on, there was very, it pretty much pushed all of the paste out the way. Now, I'm not saying I put too much on, but when you take the cooler off, what's underneath is so perfectly thin and level, they've definitely made changes to the shape of the IHS and it makes mounting almost idiot proof. You'd have to put so much thermal paste on and you really don't need to with these. Um, but they mount lovely. It comes off really nice. Uh, as far as thermal paste is concerned, and I do get through a lot of it, because if you think about each CPU chains, thermal paste, each board chains, thermal paste, I get through tubes and tubes of it. This has been a very pleasant process. There hasn't been loads seeping out going around the, um, around the outside of the socket. It's always looked like it's mounted properly. It's been really refreshing. Weird thing for me to talk about, but there we go. Now, there are some differences with the performance on the boards. The first one up, I'm gonna, you can quite easily see with Final Fantasy, the Asus at the top, and there's a big gap with MSI. Now, this is why I'm telling you, make sure you update your BIOS, because this difference on this will be a BIOS optimization. I made sure with all of the boards that I've got, and you can go and check on the website because I have screenshots with CPU Z, which show the BIOS iteration in the screenshot of how I've tested. It's all there for you to be able to find, but BIOS optimizations and BIOS changes are making a big difference. And the weird thing is I actually left the Carbon and the Tomahawk to the end to be able to retest them. And then right at the very, 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 very end, I went back and I retested the ACE again. So I've given the um, MSI boys the biggest possible chance I had for them to be able to um, be better than this graph suggests. And it's the first time 
In a long time, I'm going to say MSI have fallen down a bit on their BIOS uh, for launch. It, I, w I would have expected it to be the other way around, not this. Asus have quite clearly put resources on trying to make sure everything was right. Um, there are many games, but one of the games that I do want to talk about is Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this looks like one of the game results where uh, balanced performance profile was on. So balanced power profile, it wasn't. This was on performance. Uh, now, I will say that Guardians of the Galaxy is up and down all over the place anyway. Um, the minimums can be funky, but obviously the ace doesn't look great there at the top. 24 but we do need to remember i tested it with the new bios um, and i went back and redid the cpus as well and i got the same result so this is something for msi to work on beyond that point the around the 100 ish was about correct but the the ace at the top there despite having the highest high it also had the lowest low I do not think by the time you guys can buy this at home, and if you flash the bias, I think they will have this fixed, especially by the time that I have um, brought it to everyone's attention. But I do think this is something that you're going to keep an eye on. And it also backs up my point of make sure you stay on top of the BIOS, make sure you stay on top of the drivers. Rift Breaker, not a lot to tear between them, so we can tell it's not a graphics card driver. Um, so this is lovely, not a great deal between these. There's not a great deal between Warhammer either. I mean, with the peak, yes, okay, there's nine frames out of it, um, but that's not a massive amount for this benchmark in the grand scheme of things. Now, overall, I'm going to say that I wished that I got better footage of the extreme because where I've been changing boards, boards change, change lots and lots of work. I forgot to film the screen on the back of the IO on the extreme. And uh, I've got some B-roll where you can see there's a pattern and everything, but it actually comes up with like voltages and power usage and you can configure it to show pretty much what you want. I really liked it. I don't think I like it enough to want to pay the complete price for the extreme though, but for overall, no money, no object, that board's amazing. The extreme is very, very up there. Weirdly though, if you made me pick any of these boards that I wanted to build my own rig into or with, I'd pick the Ace. So that's another bit of a curveball. It's not the cheapest board, it just Overall, the BIOS is beautiful. It's very easy to work with. Uh, overall, I think you're probably going to get a uh, better run with this one, especially once the team at MSI kick in with the BIOS updates. Um, but weirdly, out of the whole lot, if you were to say to me, Tom, what board should I be buying? And even with a 285K, I'd say the Tomahawk. Because <clears throat> it's a great balance. It performed really well. It wasn't like class leading, like it wasn't uh, winning the graphs or anything like that. But for the cheapest board here and consistently working really well, built really well, you can go and have a look at the previews and stuff we've did previously. This would probably be the one I would be keeping my eye on. Um, there's nothing wrong with the A if you want a whiteboard. That's the one that's in there. Um, that's the one I was trying to get XTU working with um, just this morning because there was some changes and like everything is very fluid at the moment. I'm actually filming this video on launch day. Uh, that's how late I have had to leave everything and to get everything done. Um, for consistency though, out of all of them, the most consistent board overall in the graphs was the hero. Um, so I've not really helped you with your choices at all. Uh, there's the, the numbers and the scores and everything is going to evolve fairly quickly now, I think over the next few weeks. Is it really gonna matter to someone at home? I personally think you pick the brand that you're happy with. If it was me, I'm gonna want a graphics card probably to match my motherboard. You pick your brand, you pick the board that you can afford or the one that you want, and then you just kind of roll with it from that point on. Um, they've all done very well. I think in the grand scheme of things, the CPUs are the difficult topic on this one because the boards are all massively over for what you actually need for 
even a 285k. So that is something to keep in mind. I don't think you need an extreme to get the most out of a 285k. I think you're probably going to do, for everyone at home with an AIO or water cooling, I think even the Tomahawk would get the most out of any normal giving processor. But some of us do just like to spend that little bit more and the fact that that extreme is so premium is why a lot of us will end up aspiring to that and spanking credit cards or you know like credit agreements whatever to be able to get it and that's there are there it's only a few of us but at the end of the day we are there and we are in hardware enthusiasts and it doesn't matter whether you buy amd whether you buy intel there are always going to be those of us out there that want to get the best why wouldn't we want a crosshair extreme that doesn't exist and a 9950x exactly it's no different to a 285k and a z890 extreme we all aspire for that goldilocks product anyway uh, i hope that's cleared some stuff up uh, you're probably going to see a lot from me over the next few weeks uh, when things get changed and we have updates and uh, more information does come out about uh, things. I do have some specific optimization uh, guide stuff that I will be working on. Just didn't get enough time to do it in time for launch because of all the board changes, driver changes, all of that sort of stuff and last minute panics and losing two days trying to get windows to even go on a system. Um, but anyway, just so you know, like, subscribe and comment. And if you're wondering why we've not picked apart uh, this video in that we've not mentioned AMD very much. It's a motherboard uh, video, not a CPU video. There was more comparisons with other processors in the CPU specific review. But for now, at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. <laughs>